Hey, welcome back to my garden. Today I am in my con what I call my container garden area. It's where I have my um, grow bags and my earth boxes. Uh, most of my garden now is uh, in the ground using permanent raised beds, either with wooden sides or without. But I do still have a container garden area. Right now it's full of tomatoes that are nearing the end of their life cycle. They're in my grow bags. And then a second planting of zephyr squash that are in my earth boxes. If you're not familiar with zephyr squash, it's a really cool summer squash, um, like a crookneck. And it's green and yellow. It's super pretty. It tastes great. Um, highly recommend checking it out. I'll put a link in the description to where I got the seeds so you can see pictures of it. Because mine are just now starting to set fruit in this, um, this planting. Or I'd show you on the plant. Um, but what I'm going to talk to you all about today is controlling pests with an organic method um, that works particularly well for, for um, some of your bigger pests like squash beetles, squash bugs, leaf-footed bugs, um, stink bugs, things like that. I'm actually going to demo this using squash beetles. Um, they tend to be what's hitting right now. I'm in Georgia. Um, and everything under the sun likes to eat our vegetables in our garden, um, particularly squash. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to talk to y'all about is using a vacuum. You heard that right. Using a bug vacuum to basically just suck the pest right off your plants. Um, I'm going to show you, I have what's called, uh, the brand I have is called Bugzooka. Um, and I'm not going to lie. A little bit of the reason that I bought that particular brand is because the name was Bugzooka. And I could say that I owned a Bugzooka. Um, it works really well. I've had it for, I don't know, probably around 10 years at this point. After a certain point, the years run together, but it's got to be around 10 years. Uh, and it looks, it, it's, it's beat up, but it still does its job. So let's take a look at what the bug vacuum looks like. Okay, so this right here is the bug zooka um, which is the brand of the bug vacuum that I have as you can see I was talking about it's 10 years or so old and it was beat up it's a bug zoo now not a bug zooka and it's just it's looking rough I've actually got some bugs in there right now it's pretty banged up um, but still does the job works just as well the only thing in the 10 years that we've had it that I've had to do is replace um, this canister on the end and that wasn't any fault of the product it was actually um, operator error on our pro on our fault we cracked it um, and so we bought another canister for it to replace the cracked one this canister actually comes off just like that um, the manufacturer's instructions for how to handle the bugs afterwards, one of them is you can actually freeze them to kill them. Um, that is what we used to do. It's not what I do now because I have chickens and they like eating the, the bugs. When they see me coming with this canister, they know exactly what it is and they lose their minds. Like you've never seen lose their minds um, <laughs> because they know they're about to get to eat some, some bugs. Um, so what are, what, let's talk about the anatomy of the um, this particular bug vacuum you've got the collection canister here on the end and you've got what makes it work down down here on this end so this one's actually what you might call armed it's ready for me to use it I could activate it using this bu um, button right here because um, this is compressed when I press that button that causes this area to expand which creates the suction on this end and see if we can see there's little trap doors here at the top. Um, so the suction's created when that button's pressed and this incordian area is expanded. It sucks bugs in through the trap doors and they're caught in the canister here. Um, couple of reasons that I like using a, a vacuum like this. I consider this to be an upgraded form of hand picking the principles of hand picking still apply when it comes to um, the, using a bug vacuum too. It's, um, it's gonna be labor intensive. So if you've got a massive garden or you're maybe working on a commercial scale, this is probably not a strategy that's gonna work in your instance. But if you've got a normal backyard garden like I do, um, or a small backyard garden, I used this when I had a really small patio garden years ago. 
Um, but if you've got, if you're working on a normal size backyard garden scale, I think that this could work really well, but it is still very much like hand picking in that you have to go to every plant and look under the leaves and look for those pest bugs or look for signs of those pest bugs to tell you that you've got them there and that you need to look a little bit harder, um, which can be a little labor intensive. And that's why I'm saying this might not work if you are um, gardening on a really large scale or you're farming. Um, but the reasons that I like using the bug bug vacuum like this, um, I find that it really works better than straight hand picking, um, particularly for the bugs that are a little bit faster moving, like say a leaf footed bug, um, some stink bug to, to a lesser extent, squash bugs in particular. They are hard to get when you're hand picking. They can just get away from you quicker. I mean, leaf footed bugs will fly right away. Um, there's also uh, an ick factor. If you, if you have a strong ick factor with touching and grabbing bugs, this will prevent that. Um, I have the so-so ick factor. I don't really wanna be grabbing bugs if I don't have to. Um, I'm not completely opposed to it. I will, if I don't have my bug vacuum and I see a bug, I'll squish it. Um, but I'd prefer not to if I had the option. <laughs> So it prevents the ick factor and it allows you to catch some of those quicker um, pests. And the reason it allows you to catch them, one, you've got this longer distance. See, you've got the whole area. You're going to be holding it back here and then you've got this whole area here. So you can be a little further away from the bug when you're trying to get it uh, and that helps. But also when you press this button, it immediately deploys the vacuum action up here. and so the bug doesn't have time to get away. Once you've got it in place and you hit that button, if you've got it placed well, you've caught the bug. Um, if you're trying to sneak up on one, they can get away from you. So that's why I like using a bug vacuum. Now I'm gonna try to demo this for y'all, um, how it works. This could be really interesting, trying to, to hold a camera, hold this, press the button, while also holding up a leaf so that we can get to um, the squash beetles that I know are, I know there's at least two on um, my Zephyr squash down here. So um, bear with me, this could be really interesting. All right, y'all, there it is. There's our culprit. That is a squash beetle. I'm gonna try to get him while holding this camera, while also using the bug vacuum. Ta-da! Success! I don't know if you can see him, but he's in there. I got him. That's all there was to it. All I did was press that um, button that I showed y'all before to activate um, the vacuum. I'm actually going to just turn this around real quick and, and get back up. So you can see that bottom part's now expanded. Um, so that tells me that, that I just used it. And if I wanted to use it again, I would need to... Um, compress it. Let me see if I can get y'all a shot of that. Just press it down like that right there. It clicks. Um, I don't know if y'all heard the clicking sound, but that's all it takes. It's armed and ready to go again to get another one. Um, so I hope that's helpful. I'll put some links down in the description for Bugzooka and for the Zephyr Squash just because I think it's cool. Um, thanks so much for watching.